Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Meraki Monday. I'm Bobby Young, and I have with me Dan Stewart. Uh, today, we're going to go over a few Meraki products that launched last week. Um, the MV2, which is a brand new camera, and the MT11, which is a new sensor. So, Dan, I was off for about a week. So, um, why don't you kind of catch me up on maybe something that I might have missed in this kind of soft launch that they had last week? Well, it's more than just a soft launch. These are new products that actually are out in the wild. So these are fully orderable, fully shipping right now. Um, and yeah, we can see what Meraki has uh, launching in their Cisco Q4. Um, so launched, uh, what, June 1st was the newest addition to the Meraki camera family, the MV2. Uh, this one uh, looks a little different, I would say, Bobby. Um, it's not something that would be maybe considered your typical um, ceiling mount camera or your traditional IP camera. This one looks more like a desk mount kind of camera. And I guess it's a flexible camera. They call it an advanced flex camera uh, for this device because it has many different um, viewing angles, options for installation, different ways you can place it, making it, I think, a little more accessible to different industries that we'll see maybe don't have a complete reliance on all things uh, PoE and switching of how these devices may connect. So, as you can see from some of the images um, that these cameras can be installed on a desk, this one's on a wall, um, it can be mounted in different ways, uh, whether it be uh, magnetic to a wall, whether it be completely uh, drilled in or fixed in position, or even just on a desk, um, because these things are actually connected and powered by USB-C. That's a shift. <laughs> Meraki's yeah, cameras, shift. traditional <laughs> IP cameras, what are PoE based, where a network cable is running to them for data and power because they're radically, you know, a, a static install. These guys, you know, typically, you know, yes, can be fixed, but are a little bit more mobile, you know, desk mountable. You want to position them in different areas, be a little more flexible where you want to install them. So Meraki did the idea of using USB-C as the power component and Wi-Fi for the data component. So I'm seeing this as a, a really nice opportunity. Looks like small business might be really big on this because then we wouldn't have to, if we needed a couple of these to go maybe along with um, some cameras that are already in place, we don't have to upgrade maybe a PoE switch or have this massive need for more power. Something could be powered USB-C. Uh, I'm assuming there's a couple of different options on, on how to power those as well. Oh, there are. Yeah, let's take a look here. Um, before we jump to the powering options, we just want to kind of look at, I think you kind of tapped into it, right? Where could these be good fits for? Um, you know, wide angle view, flexible mounting installation options. They appear very compact. So small businesses, yeah, might be the best fit for these because maybe you haven't made that infrastructure investment or maybe you have different areas where cameras could be installed, but maybe an ethernet cable sitting there doesn't look um, aesthetically pleasing or it's not run in that area, but maybe you are near a power outlet and you could just plug in the USB adapter to the wall and then run the cable over to the camera. So the, it seems like the idea for this camera is really based on its kind of install flexibility, but also analytics, uh, because this camera is a second generation camera from Meraki. It's you know indicator of the number two in the part number. So all the Meraki analytics that we've seen from their other generation cameras or other models uh, in that gen two are gonna be part of this uh, uh, camera opportunity. But one thing that we're, we're seeing with this camera is that by the documentation, it does not have any uh, local or onboard storage or the ability to really use this as a recording camera to view historical mm -hmm. video. So the positioning is really live video, analytics of the area, footfall traffic, people in the space, all those kind of things to gain that rich analytics to your environment that these cameras can provide. And then as it shows here, cloud archive would be the way to look at 
moving any type of data to the cloud from a historical positioning standpoint. So it's kind of a multi-component view, right? How do you want to use the cameras analytics driven? Is it storage based historical viewing? Those conversations will kind of position. Is this camera going to be best? Or maybe we look at maybe more of the traditional MV12 entry model cameras where it has that 256 gig storage drive for the historical view. Yeah, and I could say that that we did try to do a little bit of research. We tried to get some information on this um, as far as you know some of the kind of more you know kind of nerd knobs and and tech specs. Um, and it looks like it's basically brand new enough where we really don't have that that you know that that plunge of resources on Meraki's website yet. So there is a data sheet at this point. There's an orderability guide. We found a few things on Sales Connect, which is a great resource if you haven't seen it for, uh, you know, Meraki um, resources. But as far as those those uh, those really nice white papers, the industry tab that has that drop down to kind of where we can kind of utilize this in different industries, um, we don't have that yet. Um, Dan, I can imagine that at some point we will be having more of that information on the site. Um, we'll obviously be having more partners, more end users that are installing these. So we'll kind of get a, a better feel of, of, you know, that use case that I think in this being positioned in, you know, one or two sentences, um, maybe a little bit hard for maybe some of our partners to kind of, you know, to, to go out and sell. Yeah, it's always tough with new products, right? You're always looking to the vendor to have as much information out there. And Meraki, to their point, has done a really good job of getting that data out to the wild, right? So these cameras launched uh, this one specifically early June, right? So they have on their website today, the MV camera details as part of their indoor camera uh, line card. They have all the details you want about the camera, field of view, how it's powered, some recording capabilities. And, and some of the words here are where we are looking for some more information. So typically in these videos, we like to have all the details at our fingertips so we can, you know, uh, relay them to you. But some of the documentation here is giving us some pause that we're going to be touching on this camera again, uh, eventually when we do get this in our uh, business transformation center and use it um, in our facility with some hands on time to understand really what's going on here. Because one of the things that caught me off guard was it says here, right, Bobby, uh, 1080p video recording with H.264. But as we saw prior, it was saying, well, it's, it's you know, not for historical recording. So yep. some of the, the verbiage here seems a little interesting. And then I want to direct you to the specifications uh, portion of this page, because one thing that caught my eye that. I've not seen anywhere else in the documentation from Rocky slideware install guides or otherwise is this message right here. 32 gig high endurance solid state storage. That indicates to me there's some local storage going on, but not to a historical amount, right? Even the smallest MV 12 camera that Meraki has has a 256 gig drive. That's going to give you a lot of historical storage 32 gigs still not bad right that's enough to get the camera booted up and do all its functions and store something but how much how long is it always archiving to the cloud but that cloud archive is another license <laughs> so there's still some confusion from my side at least on when they state this storage in the specifications what does that really mean because anywhere else you go in this data sheet that's giving you all the great information, deep dive on the camera itself, does not mention anything about a 32 gig storage capacity, but it does go into the ability for the optional cloud archive license for video storage there. Okay. So, and again, I think you hit it on the, on the head. I, this is a new product. Um, you know, it's going to be something that we're going to have kind of have to see positioned. I, I could tell you that from just from an industrial design perspective, I really, really like the look of it. Um, it's something that I haven't seen in, you know, any other, you know, kind of camera. Uh, I've been working with um, physical security at Ingram, uh, actually, even before before I did Cisco. Um, and uh, from a design perspective, that's always, you know, kind of how a lot of these companies really kind of 
um, never match themselves, right? They kind of, they all look the same. There's a dome camera, there's a bullet camera, that's about it. Um, so to see this and to see kind of some of the different ways that you can install it, you mentioned, um, you know, the power being uh, USB-C, obviously that gives us the capability of doing a very quick install in the sense that we don't have to run any new ethernet lines. If you have a small business, you know, something where maybe you're utilizing a, you know, one of the 360 degree cameras uh, to begin with, and you need something to maybe just shoot down some of the aisles to get more analytics. Um, this seems like a very, very easy install uh, to the point where, you know, it, it doesn't seem like a yeah, magnetic base plate with a, a quarter inch screw, right? So one screw, putting it in there, you're not putting in any, you know, uh, uh, electrical boxes, you're not running any lines, you're not, you know, having to get, you know, permits or anything in, in, in input. Um, it's, you know, it's there and it's there. It's there and it's there, but it's also not there because as you look at some of the information that we found on the installation guides uh, and even the spec sheets as well, you mentioned like what's in the box, right? So you get the camera, you get the mounting hardware, the wall mounting kit, all that good stuff to put it anywhere you want to put it. But then you're missing something in the box, in my opinion, like it's a USB powered device. Yep. But where's where's the cable coming from or where's the power coming from like we've seen from a lot of phone manufacturers where they're no longer including the power adapter in your box but you may still get a cable or something and you have to find in your drawer all the different you know decades worth of old adapters you might have sitting around uh hoping it can you know support that usb connector and and go that direction so to that degree i think we're seeing meraki take a little bit of that approach because in the install guide, it says, you know, the powering adapters are not included in the box. So now we have to be thinking of the camera archival with maybe a cloud archive license for historical purposes. But before we even get there, how are we powering it up? And the good thing is they give us options, right? So we have at the bottom your traditional USB power adapter, which does come with the cable. Uh, it is USB-C. Uh, from the adapter and the camera side. So it's universal in that respect. Um, very traditional, plug it in your power on anywhere in the wall and, and you're off to the races. But the interesting one here is the top one, the ethernet to USB-C dongle, where you can consume a traditional PoE interface on a switch connected to this adapter. And on one side, you have the ethernet cable port. On the other side is the USB-C connector and that will allow the power from your switch via the adapter to go through the cable to connect to your camera. <laughs> so we have options to choose from, but it looks like we have to make that a part of our pre-sales conversation as we're selling these cameras to understand how they want to connect these cameras to be powered in their environment. But either way, it's a Wi-Fi based data connection. So everyone's got wireless in their environment. The, the data portion seems pretty straightforward. But the power, I think, is going to be one of those conversations where you don't want to just buy the camera and then you open up the box and say, uh, where's where's the adapter? <laughs> so that's yeah, definitely idea. something to consider. So that's the camera. Obviously, we have some research to do, but we want to highlight that that's out and about and able to be resold. Um, more information to come as we get in our hands and do some great unboxing with that. And that's, other, that's maybe, sorry. yeah, go ahead. sorry, sorry, just real quick. <laughs> and that's maybe the, uh, the point that we kind of maybe glossed over a little bit is that that new camera can be used as, you know, a uh, hub for these sensors that Meraki is pushing out to. So the other use case outside of analytics, you know, would be to basically give yourself a little bit more range when it comes to installing some of these sensors in different parts of your business. That's a great point. Um, so sensors are driven by um, Wi-Fi 6 access points and cameras uh, from Meraki. So this new one, this MT11, uh, which is a new addition to their probe, uh, sorry, their sensor lineup, um, does use the same Bluetooth connectivity, uh, does um, go in the same installation way as the existing uh, sensors uh, do from the Meraki platform. It's just adding another element to your um, temperature abilities. So as this graphic kind of shows, your sensors will go to your camera. MV2 can be that option. 
And then obviously the Meraki dashboard with your license uh, will be able to monitor the uh, details coming from those sensors. So the MT-11, um, it's another temperature sensor, uh, whereas the first temperature sensor from Meraki, that one was for ambient temperature. You, you put the sensor in a space, we have it in our data center, and it just calculates and, and tabulates just the air temperature and air humidity in the room. So it's a general uh, understanding of what's going on in that space. Now, Meraki has added this temperature sensor that is about a temperature probe going into a specific area to get very specific temperature readings in, we'll say, a refrigerated unit. That seems to be the most applicable place where these would be installed at. So if you want to understand a area and maybe the food itself in that specific area, you would put these sensors in a, um, a freezer. Well, the temperature sensor would sit outside, but the probe would go inside. Um, and then the uh, bare metal one would be good for an area in that refrigerated room. And then the glycol encased option, as we see here, uh, can be specific to contents, maybe a crate or an area within the freezer because it's a little bit more uh, hardened in its capabilities. So it's another option. It's hitting another market, right? Some of those industrial areas or uh, some of those food you know, storage areas, any place that might be in a um, arena that says, hey, I need specific temperatures and now I still like the look and feel the Meraki dashboard. I want to complement that uh, with my environment. Now we have a new option to kind of take advantage of that really specific temperature sensing. And like anything from uh, Meraki, uh, we do have these on the website. So these are officially uh, announced. They are available for ordering as of June 15th. Uh, information is still there in typical Meraki fashion, overview details, uh, the temperature ranges on there, which is important to understand. Is it going to be a fit for your environment based on the high or low of your temperature range? Specifications galore about what it comes with. And then you want to make sure as you order them, uh, again, it's a combination purchase. It's the MT-11 initially, and then you have to order the probes themselves as an additional purchase. So one sensor, one license for the sensor, one of the probes uh, based on your temperature needs, and then you're off to the races again for that opportunity. Well, good stuff. This is, uh, this is very different than the Meraki that I, I think you know Dan and I um, have really known over the last, I would say, 10 years. Um, they're definitely getting into some spaces that are really making sense when it comes to utilizing that dashboard that they have. If I can say, hey, if I can, I mean, man, they they, they started out with just wireless, right? <laughs> and said, hey, what if I could do all my wireless from one place, from one spot? And then started just, just going back into the system and said, hey, let's add, you know, uh, switches. Let's add firewalls. Uh, they went down into the devices and added systems manager. Um, the ability for them to add all of these products and, and kind of keep going and, and getting all of this stuff into, you know, this single pane of glass management um, is bold um, and and definitely something that, you know, again, you know, Dan and I are not going to, um, <clears throat> we're not going to lie. When we, when we kind of first started looking into the MV2, we, we were really confused on kind of where, you know, the, the position for it is. Um, and again, it'll be really, really nice to see those white papers and kind of start start talking to partners and start kind of figuring out, you know, where they're utilizing it. Um, I know these videos are up on YouTube, at least for now. So uh, there is a comment section uh, that I think is open. Um, yep. If you do have end users or you are utilizing the MV2 or any of these products, we'd love to actually hear from you as well. Um, it'll make us kind of doing uh, follow-ups, especially to this video. We'd love to do an MV2 follow-up, I think, sometime in the future, um, but it'll make those follow-ups a little bit more, um, you know, um, kind of community-driven uh, at that point. So please feel free to uh, uh, to comment on these videos as you see fit. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, this one's going to be short for today, so we appreciate your time, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks very much.